Hey guys, uh, Super Retrocade here. I wanted to make another video about a uh, CRT monitor that I recently purchased off eBay. Uh, this monitor that I purchased is a uh, 21 inch Fusonic uh, uh, graphics series G225F. And uh, what's pretty neat about this monitor is it's uh, towards the end of uh, production of CRT monitors. So, uh, this mon this monitor was manufactured in December of 2005. So it's like 13 years old opposed to like 25 years old. Er, but, uh, what's kind of cool about it is this was a pretty high end monitor at the time. So, uh, it's made for like graphic artists. So it's got really good color imaging and stuff and a lot of really deep uh, monitor controls. Another thing that's cool about it is it's not quite as deep as most of the monitors of its time. And it has BNC connections on the back as well as VGA. So that's kind of interesting. I, at first I thought maybe I could run uh, RGB into that BNC uh, into those BNC connectors, but it turns out they're BNC HV, so they still only support 30 kilohertz and up, where like an RGB signal is only 15 kilohertz. You know, like like the Super Nintendo outputs uh, 240p at 15 kilohertz. So even if you were getting RGB that was compatible with these BNC connectors, it still wouldn't be at high enough of a frequency for the computer monitor to handle. So what I actually found out was that these are RGB HV, which means that it's basically just a BNC connector, connectors for a VGA signal. So it was really just meant for like connecting higher end equipment to this monitor at the time. So kind of to show you what's cool about this monitor is I got it for a hundred bucks and then I paid the guy 75 bucks to drive it to uh, a midway point that was about three hours from me. So I drove three hours, he drove three hours and then I drove back. So I drove a total of about six or seven hours to go pick up this monitor. But I got this 21 inch monitor for a hundred and 75 bucks total which is a heck of a lot cheaper than buying a 21 inch or 20 inch pvm so what's cool about this is you can take the uh some different equipment and you can feed high quality uh rgb signals from your different component consoles and I'll kind of show you how I did that here. So what I have here is I have an SD to SNES flash card with an SD card that has Donkey Kong Country on, on Donkey Kong Country 2 on it. And then I have a one chip Super Nintendo. So the one chip Super Nintendo for people who don't know, it is considered the best Super Nintendo because it natively outputs um, S video and and RGB, which RGB was a higher quality signal in Europe, but it's a little brighter than it should be. So I opened it up and I did this resistor mod where you mod some resistors to the RGB lines to bring down the brightness a little bit, which helps the contrast in darker parts of the screen. So I've got this, I've got this one chip Super Nintendo that will output uh, an RGB signal and then I have an original Super Famicom controller that I made or that I modified with an 11 foot uh, cable so I just took an aftermarket cable figured out the pinouts and connected it to a real controller which isn't so big for this scenario but it's nice when you're playing on a flat screen from a long ways away and then I have this HD Retrovision uh, Super Nintendo uh, Super Nintendo component cable, and what that does is it takes the RGB signal out of the stocks or out of the 
SNES-1 chip, which is a 240p 14 kilohertz signal. And it'll take the signal and it will convert it into a, a component video signal without modifying it in any way. Basically, from, from what I understand, it's like a phase shift. Like, if you do it correctly, there's no signal loss, there's no lag, there's no anything. And HD Retrovision is really well known for this. So I have this component video cable coming out of my Super Nintendo. And I've broken off the audio to go to this little Bluetooth speaker. And then I have the, the RGB signal. So this is 240p, uh, 15 kilohertz, going into the open source scan converter. And what this is, is this is a, a uh, it's like a $200 like video game specific professional scaler. So what this will do is this will uh, multiply that signal. So you could do 240p, four, you know, it'll turn, it'll double it into 480p. It'll triple it, quadruple it, whatever five times is and it'll spit it out to HDMI. So one of the cool things that you can do with this, because most people take this and they either feed it, you know, an RGB SCART signal or a component signal or a VGA signal, and then they'll all put it to HDMI to play on their flat screen TVs. And that's not really what I'm interested in doing with it here. What I've done is I've connected an HDMI cable that is going into the back of my CRT. And it's going into this little converter. And I don't fully understand this, but apparently it is very easy to uh, convert between VGA and HDMI without any signal uh, degradation or lag. So, let's see here. Just trying to get it off. So what I have is I have this 10 DAC HDMI to VGA adapter. And this is very, very um, popular online for people who have OSSCs and high-end computer monitors. So I'm just going to hook that back up. So now at this point, what you have is you have uh, a one chip SNES going feeding 240p 15 kilohertz into the HD retrovision component cable which is then going into the OSSC it's getting line doubled to like 35 kilohertz 480p and then it's going into my ViewSonic graphic series 21 inch CRT so I'll turn it on real quick and show you what that looks like. So I'll turn that on, turn this on. Then I have the monitor in standby mode and this monitor is actually really cool that it'll sit in standby mode. So then as soon as I turn it to the right output, right input, So then you can see this fired up to the uh, SD to SNES menu. So I've got the SNES going into the component gables, going into the OSSC, going out HDMI into the HDMI VGA converter and into my CRT. And then from here, can just fire up the games and so on the screen what you're getting is 480p uh, 35 kilohertz size to the 20 inch screen 20 inch viewable screen of the 21 inch graphic series monitor with zero lag and it really gives you like a cool, it really gives you a cool experience playing these retro games. And then you can hook up, you know, whatever, whatever sound system you want. On here, since I don't have a save file, I must be doing the 
MSU one version. So let me turn on the sound for a little bit and I'll just let you hear what the MSU one version sounds like. MSU one is MSU one is where you have uh, MP3 or CD quality audio in these games. People will remaster the music. As you can see, for those of you who are familiar with this, it sounds different. That's because someone's remastered the audio. That's a product of the uh, that's a product of the SD the SNES. I'll just kind of turn this down. Show you some of the options this monitor has. So this monitor can switch between. Uh, it can switch between the the VGA connector on the back and the BNC connector on the back. You can zoom. You can adjust horizontally both the you can adjust horizontally and vertically both the position and the sizing. I haven't been ad adjusting the sizing because then it'll blur stuff out. But I have been adjusting the position. What I've been doing is adjusting the position, and then I've been zooming so that I keep the, um, what's it called? I keep the aspect ratio. And then I haven't really gotten into the shape or color. So I'm not really sure what those do. And then down here you have uh, degauss. For if you ever see anything weird on the screen, you can try that. And then you can do the convergence. I'm not really sure what the purity is. And I've turned on this auto calibrate it seems to, it seems to be pretty cool when switching between different systems and that each system will be full screen like this. Then you can just exit out. And one of the things that I also turned on, see if I can find it here. There's a, where did I find it? There's some place where you can control well, maybe it's not a setting in here, but I really like that it'll do this standby stuff. So what's really cool about this monitor versus other ones is like when I turn off the signal going to it. So I just turned off the OSSC. It'll do an auto calibrate. And then, oh, and that's really, that's not coming up. But it'll do an auto calibrate and, that, and then it'll turn itself off after five seconds of not receiving a signal so this is one of those features where i think since it was like towards the end of their manufacturing you know you have this for all other crts won't so what this does is this actually turns off the tube when it's not receiving a signal but the circuitry inside is still on to detect if there is a signal so i've actually left the super nintendo on this whole time so now if i turn the ossc back on and put it on the right input on the OSSC. It'll you just heard it fire the tube back up, and then you're back in your game. So it's cool that you never actually have to turn it off. It just will conserve the tube for you. So that's my uh, video about my new uh, ViewSonics graphics series. G225F CRT and what I'm using to hook up to it. I also uh, ordered a Behar Brothers Garo and a Retro Tink 2X, but I really don't see like a point for them now that I have the OSSC running in this way. I mean, it really is perfect. Like I was scared that doing this, you'd have to configure a bunch of stuff on the OSSC and tinker with it all the time. But it's really been just, you turn on the OSSC, you go on the right input. And I know the newest firmware for the OSSC is supposed to auto sense what input is, or which input is receiving a signal. So in the future, I shouldn't even have to pick an input when I turn it on. So that'll be pretty cool. What's pretty cool about this too is, so now that I have it working this way, I could feed any console that has component video to it. So if I wanted to play 
original Xbox, Wii, GameCube, um, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, you know, anything, any of the systems that do component can now be fed to this uh, high-end computer monitor. So I'm pretty happy with it. And one of the, another reason why I wanted this monitor was um, when I was in like middle school and high school and stuff, uh, these ViewSonic monitors, I knew a few people who had these and these were really like pretty cool back then. So it's, it's nice having a, a big, nice professional one now. And I wanted to get it too because it was black because black can hide marks and stuff a little better than white. Like a lot of the white ones I saw online had all kinds of black streaks on them and stuff. When I got this one, um, it was actually, it was kind of dirty. It wasn't like real bad, but so what I did was I took um, just like Windex and wiped over all of the plastic parts. And then I took isopropyl alcohol and wiped over all the plastic parts, like the bezel and stuff. And then I uh, took Windex again and then just to get some of the isopropyl alcohol off. Then on the water or on the screen, I used distilled water with a uh, microfiber cloth. And like there was like some gunk in here, but I got you know like in this bottom part. But I was able to get all that off. So now it's it's pretty much in pristine condition for being 13 years old. I mean, there's some real tiny marks, but. It's pretty awesome, and I think it's going to be a lot easier to store than I initially thought, because that was one of my concerns, too, because the box for this thing was huge, and I'm not sure why. I'm not sh I decided that I'm not going to store the box, because the monitor is a lot easier to store without the box. I'm just going to make sure that, I, that when I'm not using the monitor, I'm storing it in a climate-controlled environment, so I, I probably won't put it in my in storage. So that's my video about my new CRT. I hope uh, people watching this, uh, you know, if you're looking at getting a VGA computer monitor, I tell you the OSSC is the way to go with that 10 DAC adapter. Uh, it really looks cool and it gives it like an old school look. So thanks for watching and, and I'll see you next time.